So I'm Nathan Anderson. Uh, I've been in the course for about two years. I was in here last year as well. And this year we just tried to improve everything. The ball starts right here, fish tank. And we have a pipe going down here that goes through here. And the pipe's kind of up above where the water level is, just so that the water, if any pumps shut off, it doesn't drain all the way down so that we can keep it at one level. And then it goes into our swirl separator and it basically uses gravity to crawl the big heavy stuff. All of it falls down to the bottom. And this right here is just another reservoir, just holds water. And this gets pumped into our sand filter right here. This kind of takes the smaller stuff and it filters it. And we're also doing hydroponics. The plants that take out all sorts of nitrites and nitrates and that. And then we go to even smaller level, kind of micro level, and we're also doing hydroponics with these plants. These are watercress. And we also have bottle caps in here. And they just basically gather bacteria. And it's clean, good bacteria that cleans the water. And we also have uh, activated charcoal in here as well. So it goes kind of the big heavy stuff, smaller, and then like chemical bacteria and all that stuff. And then it goes into the reservoir, just another holding tank right there. Then it goes back up to the header tank and it just keeps on recycling the water. Basically we have the kind of the smaller fish. There's not much fish in here, there's only like 150. And these are like the newer guys, so the ones that just didn't grow that well. And then it goes into the medium fish. And then over in this tank over here is our large fish. And we graded them with grading trays, just dump the fish on and then all the small guys fall through here and you just kind of shake it a little bit and then we just dump it and separate them. And also we, we're kind of doing a little bit of both of everything for whoever likes to work with their hands or if you'd rather do stuff on pen and paper. So we do a lot, a lot of uh, bacteria stuff. I'll show you over here. Right here we do a lot of the environmental sampling and uh, dissecting a fish. Sometimes if a fish dies, we'll dissect it to see if uh, any sort of bacteria or any sort of diseases that they might have. And we also take water samples to see the temperature, nitrites, the any, ammonia levels, anything. And we weigh the fish to see how much they need to be fed. And we actually have a computer program. And I'll show you that in the other room. I'm explaining the computer work. So this right here is the spreadsheet of how many fish we have and how much we feed them and how much they weigh. And we have the expenses too. So right here is everything we buy. We just put it in the computer and it tells us how much we have left. And we also have the environmental, like all the water stuff. So like the nitrate levels, nitrates, and the pH. So that kind of helps us like see if the water is bad for the fish, if it's like killing and stuff. So, pretty much everything. This is our, kind of our prototype for our hydroponics. Right now we just have, we're gonna have pipes up here and it's kind of like a waterfall. It just goes all the way around and we'll have PVC with holes in it and the plants will be in there. This is just kind of a prototype for next year because uh, he wants to do it with the younger grades, he wants to do something like the fish farm, but not as big and complicated. We're not really trying to do it to raise fish, like that's the goal, but Mr. Lee said he just wants us to learn how to work together and to work like as a team and a group and like actual life skills. You know, you get to learn uh, to think for yourself and like, yeah, like as a team, like I said before. Um, because it's difference between like just writing notes and actually out doing this stuff. And we're also thinking of next year doing like trout, but we this year we want to do it. We just had troubles with uh, licenses, like all that. But this is kind of a set for what we're going to be using next year. We're just going to take this all down, clean it, and then try to do it for trout. Really came to me said he needed a different way of feeding the fish than having to feed them by hand. Uh, he said I wanted a, an automatic fish feeder. So I actually had that foot fan motor first on like, I don't know, this wooden disc. And 
that ended up not working. So I did this, Mr. Dealer gave me the idea, and I don't know, it was like half first, and it wasn't long enough because of the speed that it was going at the point, so I made it longer. And so how is it going to work though? Um, there's, it was supposed to be duct tape, but that didn't work because the duct tape was too heavy. Uh, there's a plastic wrap, it's kind of like a conveyor belt that wraps around all these rollers, and it goes like really slow, so through the day it eats the fish, like a little portion each, like maybe three hours or something. And yeah. And how does the food get to the fish? Well, it starts off maybe back there or halfway, and it slowly like rolls over towards here and just drops into the tank from here. So the last year the entire farm was in here, right? And what we did, we started out with the idea last year that we were going to have two tables here, tank there, the water would come down onto the table filled with aquariums, the aquariums would overflow down into a bucket, the bucket would then pump the water back up to a filter up here and then the water would flow. So we'd have a recirculation system again just like we do this year, but we didn't have the type of cleaning system that we have this year. So it's been much more successful this year. Of course last year was just starting out so we wanted to start with baby steps. This year, the kids have actually built a system that we could actually put trout in. And the eventual goal is to get permission from the government to raise rainbow trout here in the school and then stock local lakes or local streams, either rainbow trout or Arctic grayling. And then the kids have ownership. They, they, they start to buy into the stewardship of the environment and they start to say, you know, look, I'm part of a team. Um, I didn't do the computer programming. I didn't do the biology maybe, but I did the plumbing. I created this. I helped raise these fish. And two years later, they're out fishing with their buddies and they catch a fish that they know came from this school. That's an amazing event for a kid and for anyone to know that they're part of that. The other thing about this course is such, that's such, so nice is in regular courses, if a kid doesn't study and he fails a test, well, that's not a big deal. He fails a test, it only affects him. Here, someone comes in and doesn't feed fish or doesn't build something or doesn't keep track of something, it affects everybody. So there's an amount of positive peer pressure that says you've got to do your job or else my job gets messed up, like the real world. And so they are pressuring each other in a positive way to participate, to work on something that they have said or they have um, developed on their own with their own interests, but is a small part of a bigger puzzle. Um, this is why I created this whole course all around my experience in a fish farm when I was a biologist in a fish farm. Uh, because it wanted something more based on the real world as, a f as opposed to artificial assessment. Kids are being marked on things like teamwork, work ethic, attitude. It doesn't matter if they're building the plumbing, if they're creating the computer system, if they're doing uh, bacteriology. It all comes down to are you doing your part and if not, why not, how can we help you do better? Um, the, the, the school district has been super supportive. The town of Temple Ridge has been incredibly supportive. You couldn't ask for better people in this town than the people we have who are helping us. It's, it's just incredible. Um, it's just been a wonderful experience as a teacher because uh, I'm very much about discipline. I'm very much about um, keeping the bar high in my classes, high expectations. And I wanted to reach the kids that traditional learning wasn't reaching but I still wanted to keep the bar high. And this course allows me to not only do that, but to get kids uh, involved in something that they're interested in. Now, I'm not mechanically inclined. My wife will tell you I'm the first guy that messes anything up when it comes to a car or anything like that. But this allows me to get those kids who are mechanically inclined, who have no interest in, say, nuclear physics, that I'm teaching in my other classes, to buy into science. This is hands-on science. This is hands-on cooperation. This is real world. There's even a part in the course that says if you're not doing your job and you've had bad evaluations for so many times, you will be taken out of the farm. And kids see that. I've never had to do that yet, but to have that there, it makes it more like the real world for them. They have evaluations. They don't do their job, they're asked to leave. Or they get a pay of a uh, they get their pay raised or they get their pay lowered based on how well they're doing after uh, uh, an interview with me. Now the pay of course is their mark. Everybody starts at 75%. They go up or go down based on their evaluations. There's no tests. There's no assignments. But I gotta tell you, tests and assignments are artificial assessments. 
these are real assessments, and these kids buy into it. They're not fools. They know the tests and assignments are artificial, but this is not artificial, and so they buy into it. I can't teach physics this way. I can't teach chemistry this way. But this I can teach, and I can snag those kids who are craving a more real-world connection. And a variety of real world connections. Not just everybody's going to work on this one car or everybody's going to work on this one wood chop project. Nothing against that. This says computer person, bacteriology or biology person, environmental person, carpentry, plumbing. Everybody's interested and everybody's interconnecting and saying, hey, you're done your project, go help this person over here. I know it's not your main interest, but this is what you're going to do today. So part of a team, everybody working together, it's been an amazing experience, and the improvement from last year to this year, last year was phenomenal, but this year has been unbelievably good. The nice thing, really key this year is, the kids are taking more and more responsibility for solving problems, as opposed to coming to me to solve this problem or that problem in the system, or make suggestions, they are coming up with these solutions. The bottle cap solution, um, hundreds of different solutions they just come up with on their own and it's just been an amazing event i'm really really proud of them i'm proud of these students i'm proud of our district and our school for for taking a leap of faith here and i'm really proud of our town they have been so supportive the town council local businesses people on internet or on facebook they are behind these kids 100 percent and most of the people or a lot of people don't even have kids in the school but they're ready to jump in wherever they can i've got parents who aren't even don't even have kids in the course and they're coming in to help where they can. We've brought in people who, you know, have some expertise in this area or that area and they're coming in giving advice to the kids. It is a phenomenal experience. It really is. I wish all my courses could be like this. Unfortunately, I don't see the way that can happen, but to have a mixture of this course with another course, I think it's the best of both worlds. I, I, I am so glad that I, I, I started this crazy idea when I did. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. And, and the kids are the best, the best kids, you know what I mean? All the kids in Tumblr Ridge uh, are phenomenal. I've been in schools where uh, kids are very disrespectful to the, the teachers and the adults around them, but not here. Our kids, I would put my science kids and what they learn and our kids here up against any kids in the province. And you can quote me on that. These are the best kids you are going to find. Not to say other people don't have great kids, but I only have the experience with these guys, these folks, and they are phenomenal. Their minds are sharp. They're conceptual thinkers. They're critical thinkers. They are brilliant. Brilliant. And um, so proud of them. I couldn't be prouder of them. They're, they're amazing kids. I have worked with, and I don't mean to toot my own horn, but I have worked with some of the greatest minds of my generation in biology. I'm not one of them, but I, I've worked alongside them. I know them. I've, I've said hello to them in the hallways. And these kids match them easily. Easily. They are brilliant kids, and they're going to have a bright future. Best thing to happen to them, I think, is is to gain the confidence that, they, that they've gained in our school and in courses like this. So, yeah really good kids. I'm not telling you it's going to be easy, I'm telling you it's going to be worth it. That is the key to this entire course. Some kids can't do it and they can't keep up the work ethic and if they can't it's not the place for them. They need more structure in some cases. Other kids thrive under this kind of stuff. High expectations, uh, lots of freedom, get it done and they do. And you know, what else can you ask for? You can't. You can't ask for anything else. But yeah, that's our that's our, our model in here.